Hello and welcome back to The Basics. This is going to be the second video in this series and this is regarding foundation, regarding how to achieve that flawless foundation look. So I hope that you guys enjoy this little tutorial regarding foundation, what brushes to use, and how to apply. So stay tuned and let's get into the video. first thing you want to do before applying any foundation at all is making sure that you have your skin moisturized or that you have a primer on. You don't necessarily need a primer. If you have moisturizer on, you can do one or the other. You can do both, but it's not necessary to apply a primer onto your moisturizer. If you do, only apply very little because it's not really needed because you already have your moisturizer. With moisturizers, I have a couple that I like to use before I start to go in with my foundation. I have the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel. This is very good and it's very affordable. It's like $10. Then I have my Facial Moisturizer from Lush. This is Celestial, so it's great for dry skin. You want to make sure that you're getting the correct moisturizer that's going to suit your skin type. So if you're oily, make sure that your moisturizer is great for oily skin. If you're dry, make sure your moisturizer is great for dry skin. If you're sensitive skin, make sure your moisturizer is great for sensitive skin, so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and be applying my Lush moisturizer today. Make sure that you get your neck as well. And we're just going to let that set enter our skin for a few minutes. Also, along with my moisturizer, I like to spray some of the Josie Marin Nirvana Hydrating Treatment Mist just to add a little bit more hydration. And we're just going to let that set into our skin. Next, I'm going to use this NYX Pore Filler. I enjoy using this because it minimizes my pores and it just makes your foundation look more flawless and airbrushed. So if you have large pores or you just want to cover those pores up, this is a great product. And NYX is very affordable. So I'm not going to apply that to the whole face. I'm just going to apply it right here to minimize my pores. And I'm just bouncing that product into my pores so that it really does its job. I like to let each product have its time to set into the skin just because I feel like it gives it a better finish when I'm done. Now, like I said, the primer is optional. You don't need to do it if your skin regimen in the morning includes moisturizing, or you can do both if you want to be a little extra. I'm always extra. So we're going to go ahead and apply the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water to what we've started. And once again, just letting that set into the skin for a minute. The next thing we want to do when it comes to applying our foundation is there's the option of color correcting. So I have the Makeup Revolution Ultra Professional Corrector Palette. This just has eight shades of color correctors in them. We have the pink, which is used to brighten. We have the lavender, which neutralizes yellow tones. Then we have the green, which neutralizes redness. And then we have our orange, which ne neutralizes blue tones. Then we have up here the peach that helps to balance out slight discoloration. The white adds natural highlight and brightens. The cream neutralizes purple and covers dark areas. And then we have the brown which balances ashiness and medium to dark skin tones. So that's just the overall colors and what they do in the Makeup Revolution palette. So it's not necessary to color correct, but if you want to kind of help your foundation and if you have like an event or anything to go to, it's great to kind of color correct. That way it's not peeping through your foundation. If you have like a pimple or something, we can color correct that. So it's not as noticeable. And these palettes retail for $10 at Ulta. These palettes, the concealer palettes, the blush palettes, the bronzer palettes, they're all $10 and they're really amazing you guys I really love these palettes a lot I love using them when I'm doing makeup and stuff so I don't need a whole lot of color correcting today I just have a majority of redness some blemishes I have a little bit of dark circles underneath my eyes but not too much but if you want to color correct that you still can because overall this is a flawless foundation tutorial for you guys so I'm gonna show you guys how to achieve it so I'm gonna dip into the green just so lightly and we're gonna put that over our redness right here in the crevices of our nails my nose is red a lot sometimes so 
We'll color correct that a little bit. I'm just going to take this cream color and kind of cancel out the dark circles that I have a little bit underneath my eye, just to kind of brighten up the area. I know this is going to look a little crazy. And then blue tones, if you want to cancel out the veins in your eyes, go ahead and take some of that orange to neutralize out the blue tones. So we're going to neutralize out our veins. And then I'll just take some of this peach color just to kind of cancel out the discoloration that's happening in my cheeks. Now applying color corrector is going to be different for everyone just because we all have different problems with our skin. So make sure that you're applying the color corrector that suits you. Don't follow the patterns that I did, the colors that I use because my skin is different from yours. And then we're just going to go ahead and take this damp beauty sponge real quick and just blend that out a little bit. Alright, so now that we have the skin color corrected, it's time to apply the foundation. So when it comes to applying the foundation, there's a few things that you can use to the apply. You have your fingers. They're great for applying foundation. If you don't want to use your fingers, I like using these flat foundation brushes. This one is from MAC. This is the 190 flat foundation brush from MAC and this is the E9 flat foundation brush from Morphe. I enjoy using these types of brushes to spread the product around instead of using my fingers or something like that. So I like using these brushes to spread my product. When it comes to buffing in the product, I have a couple brushes. The reason why these look a little different is because if you are dry skin, I wouldn't recommend like rubbing it in type of motion. So this brush is the E54 from Morphe. It is this nice flat kabuki style brush. It's very dense and it's great for stippling on the foundation. If you are dry skin, I would recommend stippling only just in case you have any like red patches or flakiness going on. It's not going to irritate or flick those things off. I would recommend stippling just because it's not going to irritate any flakiness that you have and it's not going to enhance it. You are normal to oily skin. You can you can still use this brush but you also have this brush as well available to you. It's just this nice, it's more rounded. It's not as straight as this one is. This one's more rounded so you can use it in a buffing motion, like a circular buffing motion. I wouldn't recommend circle buffing motions for dry skin but if you have normal to oily skin, buffing is an okay technique to use, but I would even recommend stippling just because it leaves a more airbrushed finish to the skin and I just don't want you to deal with any streakiness if that happens while buffing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I personally apply my foundation. So I'm going to take my Tarte Minted BB Cream Primer. I'm just going to go ahead and take my MAC 190 Flat Foundation Brush to spread the product around first. So I'm just going to squeeze that right on. And just kind of downward strokes just so you don't irritate any dry patches that you might have. When you're picking out a foundation, you need to make sure that it has the correct undertones that are going to suit your skin tone. You want to make sure that it's suited for your type of skin. So if you're dry, don't get a matte finished foundation. Don't get foundations that are going to add oils to what you already have. And make sure that you check the coverage, that it's the correct coverage for you and what you're looking for. Now that I have the product spread around, I'm going to go back to my E54 flat brush from Morphe and I'm just going to stick that into my skin just so it gives that nice airbrushed finished just because of how dense it is like it can literally stand on its own it creates this nice airbrushed finished when we stipple the product into our skin Now that we have the foundation pressed into the skin, I'm just going to add some concealer now to kind of brighten up the T-zone and underneath my eyes. And this just helps to add some dimension to our face. I'm just going to dab it on. I'm not going to apply a whole lot. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. So now that I have applied the concealer where I needed to add brightness to my face, I'm just going to take this nice round little stippling brush. It doesn't have a name or anything. I got it off Amazon, but it works great. We're just going to stipple that concealer into the skin. And then I'm just going to go back in with my damp beauty sponge to kind of blend that out further. 
So I don't like setting my entire face. I only enjoy setting my face very lightly, but underneath the eyes where I applied that concealer, that part will crease up on you guys, unless you have the Tarte Shape Tape. <laughs> but you wanna make sure that you set your under eyes so that it does not crease or budge throughout the day. So I like taking my RCMA No Color Powder and my E48 brush from Morphe. When it comes to applying powders, you can take a smaller brush if you want to have a fuller coverage from the powder, or you can take a larger brush if you want to have a more sheer coverage from the powder. So I'm just gonna take this smaller one, dip it in there, and we're just gonna set the underneath the eye. You wanna make sure that it's not already creased because if you set the crease, it's gonna, don't set the crease. Make sure that you blend it out before you set underneath the eye. Now that we have that eye set, we're gonna go on to the next one. Make sure to blend it out before setting. I just wanna make sure that where I applied my concealer, so underneath my eyes, my T-zone, I wanna make sure that that's at least set because right here, your chin, that you touch constantly throughout the day. So you wanna make sure that that is set very well so that it doesn't budge throughout the day. No matter how many times you're touching it, you wanna make sure that underneath the eyes is set so that it doesn't crease or budge. I like making sure that my forehead, my smile lines, and everything right here in the center is set just so because you have your smile lines, you're constantly talking through the day, and you want to make sure that those are set so they don't crease up on you. Same with the forehead. You want to make sure that it's set so it doesn't crease up on you. But I don't like setting my entire face. Just the T-zone. That's it. So once all that is set, I'm just going to go ahead and brush it away and just lightly use the remainders of that to kind of set the rest of the foundation. Just make sure if you added any concealer or foundation to your eyes that those are set as well because when you're blinking and everything, they will crease. So make sure that that is set as well if you put any product there. And that is it for this how-to and that is it for the basics flawless foundation tutorial. And I hope that you guys enjoyed and that this was somewhat helpful for you guys. So if you did like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave any comments or likes down below and make sure that you are subscribed so that you never miss a video and I'm also doing a giveaway on my channel very soon and once a thousand of you beauties are subscribed I will do a giveaway so stay tuned for that because I'm very excited and I just want to go over my thoughts on the palette just because it is so gorgeous 